Alrighty, well, it is 7.31 p.m. on Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. Good evening, my name is Christian Klein and I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I am calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, for the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Kevin Mills. Here. Daniel Riccardelli. Here. Now, Lane Hoffman. Here. And Mr. Holly is unable to join us this evening. Um, on behalf of the town, uh, we have Rick Ballarelli, our board's administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. And Mr. Lee is on vacation this week. Um, and just checking that we have folks here for our hearings. Um, on behalf of 82 Grandview Road, um, the Mickelson's available? Yes, we're here. Perfect, thank you. Um, Making a video For Venner Road, um, Shital Chaduri? Yes, I'm here. Wonderful. And for uh, 3840 Newport Street, um, Brandon Wilcockus? Here. Good to have you. Um, before we begin briefly, um, so be unfortunately I found out rather late that Mr. Hulley was unable to join us tonight. Uh, so there were five of us present for last hearing on Newport Street. And so because there's now only four of us, um, any decision on Newport Street is gonna require a unanimous vote of the board. And so I just wanted to bring that quickly to the attention um, of the applicant for Newport Street to see if you did want to um, proceed this evening or if you wanted to um, have us have us hear what, uh, sort of review the changes and then continue to the next hearing or if you wanted to just continue straight on it but just because we we only have four members available to vote on this I just wanted to bring this to your attention early so that in case you had wanted to continue to a different evening then we would um, we wouldn't keep you around all night um, well, I mean, I want to show you what we came back with from the architect. So, okay, I guess it would behoove me to go forward. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> with that, this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act extending certain COVID-19 measures signed into law on February 15th, 2022. This act includes an extension until July 15th, 2022 with the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirements to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to continue to participate remotely. Public bodies may continue to meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by phone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. So tonight we have no administrative items, uh, but we do have um, three continued hearings. <clears throat> so moving to our agenda, uh, item number two is docket 369682 Grandview Road. Um, so I would ask, so uh, just a couple of quick rules uh, for conducting this business. Um, after I announce the agenda item, I'll ask the applicant to introduce themselves or themselves, make their presentations to the board, and request members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I'll open the meeting for public comment. And at the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. Uh, so with that, uh, if I could have the applicant for 82 Grandview Road, um, go ahead and introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do.
Yeah. Hi, folks. We're um, Kate and Chad Mickelson at 82 Grandview Road. Um, we're applying for a permit to uh, build a front porch on our house uh, along approximately like two thirds of the front. Um, and uh, that's that's the application that we're making. Uh, we do have our architect, uh, Dana Ozick, is also on the call who can provide more details about the proposal. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ozick, do you want to, want to sh do you have drawings you'd like to share? Uh, or well, so it's all in the packet. Did you, um, is I, does anyone have that available to share or should I share I can it? Share that right away if you like. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, so I think as you can see in the quick rendering um, that's on the front of this um, set of drawings, the idea is to just um, add a, a front porch, a covered front porch uh, to the front of the house. Um, the idea here is that we've tried to be respectful of the scale of the street. Uh, we're not, we're trying not to get too big. We're not wrapping anything around. We're, we're just kind of keeping it to um, about, like Chad said, about two thirds of the front of the home. Um, and it's just a single story um, addition. The idea being to provide a place to be outdoors, um, to add to the streetscape, uh, to be a place um, that offers covered entry to the front uh, of the front door. Um, and uh, and that, that's really the gist of it. Um, the footprint um, is, Right now, as designed, it is about eight feet deep um, and about just under 18 feet wide. Um, and it, uh, the front, um, the front setback does get to be less than 25 feet uh, with this addition. Um, I believe it is at like 21 something. Um, uh, with with this addition, so um, so with that we uh, we obviously needed to apply um, for for a, for this special permit, um, but there isn't anything in what we are proposing that um, that doesn't fall under in my, our understanding under sort of uh, what has been in the past allowed under the special permit for this kind of uh, front entry. Thank you. Um, and then the rest of the package is mostly just construction details. It is just construction details, yes. It's just going to back up to. Um, right. So it's, yes, so it's, it's, it's just feet. under 21 feet. Yeah. Uh, so this is the existing home. Mm -hmm. And then this is the location of the proposed addition. And the, then the driveway on this side is unaffected. Correct. Okay. Um, is there, are there any features or structures in this back area of the lot? Or is uh, it just No, it's, it's just a grass open backyard. Um, this, the, the shed is where it's indicated, but beyond that, it, it's open. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I was asking is that it, where the front yard was originally um, over 25 feet, a portion of the front yard contributed to usable open space as mm -hmm. did a portion of the rear yard. So I just wanted to, now that the front yard will not be contributing to usable open space anymore, I just wanted to confirm that there was sufficient area in mm -hmm. the rear to still meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. I believe there is. Um, and then this is just the briefly the uh, same as the lot coverage remains under 35%. Mm -hmm. The front yard setback um, goes from 29.2 down to 20.7, uh, which is um, allowed via special permit and a determination mm -hmm. of um, no greater detriment. Mm -hmm. uh, the left side and the right side setbacks are both remaining exactly as they are. The mm -hmm. rear yard is unchanged. The height of the structure doesn't change. Right. Um, else essentially remains the same. Right. So with, the, yeah, the gross floor area, my understanding is if a covered front porch does not contribute to it. Um, and since we didn't um, 
we still have a 25 foot by 25 foot area in the back. My understanding was that we were okay. Okay. Um, are there questions from members of the board? None. Um, I would like to bring the board and the public's attention. So we did receive uh, late this afternoon, uh, several letters in support of the application. Um, I can just quickly share. One. There's this letter here um, from Nicole Haynes expressing the support for the plans to build a front covered porch. Uh, received the permission seeking permission for a special permit to build a porch that exceeds the current maximum size limits and distance from the road per the current zoning bylaws. We feel the plans and drawings indicate this will be done in a very tasteful manner and does not pose any adverse effects on traffic, safety, or other aspects of the neighborhood. We live around the corner from our friends and neighbors. We have a front porch ourselves. We enjoy the space quite a bit during the warmer months of the year. And we love when we see others have similar opportunities. We hope we'll grant this special permit. That's one letter. Second letter. Um, we would be concerned. We haven't been a neighbor of the Nicholson since they lived on Hawthorne Ave prior to their move around the corner to Grandview. They consider it kind and caring neighbors. Understand they're seeking a variance to add a front porch to their home. They've shared the front porch design with me, and I'm ecstatic for them as a comfortable front porch where you can relax, read, and engage with neighbors as they stroll to the park or through the neighborhood is one of the things that brings neighborhoods together. I have a small front porch where my kids and I often sit to watch the world go by and enjoy it immensely. Wish more neighbors would add one so we could get to know all our neighbors. The porch itself fits right in with the home's design and is similar to ones that are on many homes in the Heights, including many homes on Situate, Newport, Highland, have et cetera. Overall, be a great addition to the neighborhood. I look forward to sharing a lemonade with them when it is finished. And the third, um, this one here. Let's see if I can share this. Um, oh. This one here. I'm writing this letter in response to the petition seeking permission to alter the property at 82 Grandview Road. My name is Heidi Frank, and I live at 77 Grandview Road since June 2000, uh, 2006. I've lived across the street from the Mickelson since they moved in soon after we did in 2007. I've always been kind of considered neighbors. We've become close friends. They've shown me the drawings for their front porch and want to add to their house. The drawings are beautiful. The porch will be a wonderful addition to their home and the neighborhood and will offer a spot for neighbors to sit and visit. And I hope you'll grant them permission to have the porch built. Um, so those are the, the three letters, and I apologize, those all came in very late this afternoon. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that those were a part of the record. Um, <clears throat> are there, just a last check, are there questions from the members of the board? <laughs> Seeing none. Um, I, I just want to make sure that I'm going to, my name is Patty McLaughlin and I live next door before the vote. 20 seconds um, early. Okay. Right. <laughs> I will now open the meeting for public comment. Uh, okay. Public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing. Please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead of them. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the meeting host. You will be asked to give your name and address, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair, and please remember to speak clearly. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. The board and staff will do our best to show any documents uh, that the, any questioner wishes to see. So with that, um, I will turn to the, the first raised hand, uh, which is Ms. McLaughlin. So if you just give us your name and address for the record. 
Um, Patty McLaughlin um, and John McLaughlin are here. We live at 86 Grandview Road. We live next door to Chad and Kate. Um, excuse me, did you say Good something? Evening. Oh, help. thank you. Um, sorry to butt in a minute ago, but I thought you were going to vote and I wanted to make sure our, our opinions were heard. Um, the letters from the people on Hawthorne Street, you know, they're very nice, but they do live on Hawthorne Street. We live directly next door to um, Chad and Kate. And um, I, I keep hearing from, um, I think it's Dana, the um, architect that she thinks she, she, when you are talking, you're saying, I think that this is okay. I think this is okay. I'd like to know for a fact that, that it's all okay, that it's not just an opinion. And um, I feel very strongly that with the porch coming out, it's Grandview Road is now a main street for the children that go to Brackett School to and from. There's a lot of traffic that's come by here. I feel like it's gonna be blocking the, the street view. And I also feel as if it's gonna set our house back. And when you're not, opened, you're more susceptible to crime and to breaking and entrings. And being senior citizens, that's a concern of ours. Um, I also feel that the owners that previously lived there had very um, built many things with different permits that the house is extremely large now compared to other um, houses that are in the neighborhood. So. Um, and I, I just don't know what the difference between um, a porch and a deck is, because there is a deck in the back of the house and the porch in the front of the house, I've been told by um, Kate that there's gonna be a, a light and a fan on there. So that's more than just for protection going into the house from the rains or the elements. There certainly is a smaller house, a smaller um, porch that can be built if you're looking for protection from the elements going in and out of the house. I don't know, John, what were you gonna say? Um, John McLaughlin. Yeah, I'm John McLaughlin, 86 Grandview Road. Uh, I, I have a, a, a couple of comments. I happen to not believe the floor area ratio and the coverage ratios are accurate for that building. That building is three times close to what it originally was through, and it had to come through the Zoning Board of Appeals to get those permits. There's also two rear decks on that property and a patio green area taking up a big chunk of the, of the uh, open area that's not being shown on this property or these any of the renderings. Also, the renderings that came through on this thing, they're given direct front views. They're not showing the side views, how it impacts our house or Mr. Bryant's on the other side. Basically, there's not gonna be any view going down the street. We have already, the, the house, I believe, already is 45 feet, give or take, in length on our side. And then the decks go out another 20 feet. It's a, it's a very big house. Uh, we were not against them putting a small overhang for rain and, and getting into the house, but this thing was just dwarfed to a, a, an unbelievable position on it. And the people that are sending letters don't live here. We do, they, live around, they, yeah. they live around the street. Uh, you know, we, we live here, we know there's not enough parking. If they have any guests in that thing, <laughs> struggle for parking now in front of a house. And the, and it was used, the word streetscape has been used by the architect. Um, I happen to be in the real estate industry and streetscape usually is, is mentioned with both residential and commercial uh, uses, not singularly, but combined. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's not, we don't want more traffic here. Uh, we don't want more visitors. If they're walking from the streets around to Chad's house, that's one thing. But if they're coming parking, that's a whole different other thing. Um, and there's a tree in the front of the house, which is not shown other than a, a fall view that gives you the illusion you can see through the tree and it's not blocking anything. If you go and look at the tree now, it's full blown. It's as high as the uh, telephone wires. 
it's about 25 feet, and then they're going to come off this house. Uh, I'm going to say uh, 10 feet. Well, actually, it's closer to 11. When you look at the gutters and the hangout, it's going to come off into that, and there's just no way you'll see down the street, neither us or the, or the Bryans. Uh, the last thing is, like, even if it's approved, which I hope it isn't, uh, there's going to be runoff from this roof line. There's no indication where it's going, if it's going into the driveway, our driveways, the pitch goes down. It's going to be puddling in the rear of where the driveway is for both of us. Uh, it's not even being shown there. I know Charlie Bryant gets water in his cellar. Uh, he's not crazy about the conversation I've had with him, any runoff going in his direction. There's a whole bunch of other stuff here I could, I could pick apart. Um, if given time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I did want to try to address some of the questions um, that, that have been raised. So the question as to whether um, this can be permitted. So um, it's 539B, uh, no, excuse me, 539A is the section in the zoning bylaw, um, which allows the addition of uh, a porch on the front of a building by special permit. Um, so it is something that can be reviewed, but as, as a special permit, it's something that can be conditioned. Um, it is a porch where it has a floor and it has a roof structure, but it's open on the sides. Um, if the applicant was looking in the future to enclose that, that would require coming back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. They cannot do that by right. They would have to get a, a separate permit for that. Um, I think those were the two. Well, can I ask a question? How many, how many decks are all allowed? Is there an unlimited decks? Um, so, let me just finish. You haven't seen the pictures of the rear of that house. It's a nice house. I'm not here to disparage it. They've done a nice job and they keep it well. But enough's enough. This thing, this thing is just going over the top. If you had pictures of that, I, I intentionally think the architect left them out so you wouldn't have those understandings of what's physically there, mm -hmm. including the brick patio area that's got to be 20 by 20 in the open yard area. Uh, this thing, this this building and house is much bigger than you 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 believe it to be. Okay. Okay. Um. Do you have any any further quick questions? Otherwise, I was going to go to the next person on the list. I just have one other question about the the screens. If yes. somebody wants to put screens, is that considered an enclosed structure, and they'd have to come back for the to the zoning board to put screens on it? I believe the the term in the zoning bylaw is open to the weather. Um, so if it was screened, that that would still be considered open to the weather. But if it was um, you know, if there were storm windows or anything like that, that would not be considered open to the weather. So you could sit out there 10, 11 o'clock at night, have the lights, have the fans. It's basically they're gonna move the entertainment from the rear to the front of the house. How they, I mean, how, they're, how they use their, their property is not the under the jurisdiction okay. of the board. Well, that's why we're doing <clears throat> That's why I'm on the Zoom with you. I think the house is bigger, and I, I don't believe it's under the 35% coverage. Is there an alter survey for this thing or an as built plan accompanying the application so you can verify some of this stuff? Um, so we do, we do have the plans. Uh, yeah, um, is that a certified plan? So the they are signed and sealed. Okay, and they're, they're warranting they're under the 35% threshold? That is correct. Okay. And what about the uh, building itself? Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's not... It's not an as-built plan, is it? That house is bigger than, your, than that 2,900 square feet or something. I know if so the, yeah, I mean the, the bulk of the, the existing house is not you know under our purview except as it relates to whether you know this is overly sized. There's not a specific number above which or below which uh, the board can act. Um, certainly, if there are any questions about 
um, compliance with any of the, you know, any of the numerical values. Uh, that is something that the inspectional services department would review as a part of their process, um, and and would, you know, and certainly if there were issues that were not flagged during this hearing or were not um, brought to the attention during, you know, in the drawings themselves, that those would be reviewed by inspectional services and. Um, it's a possibility they may need to come back to the board in the future if there is an issue. So you're going to approve it without verification. Is the architect who's on here, is she going to warrant that the, those square footages are accurate? Um, yeah, she, we're trying to avoid this. Let me, let me just, I yeah. hate to, we don't want to keep going on this, going back and back, because they're not ready. We've been ready for three weeks. We just found out about this, by the way, three weeks ago, like 12 days in front of the meeting. Mm -hmm. We got a letter that was incorrect, a lot of typos. You know, we had no time to really look at what was going on. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for some warranties from the, the architect, because I, I don't believe that the information on the app was accurate. OK. Um, I mean, that's not the answer. Certainly something the board can discuss how they would want to approach that. Um, and you know, that's certainly something that the board can condition with inspectional services. Um, or if you know, if the board feels that, that they're not prepared to make a decision based on the information they have on hand, the board can request a, um, a continuance uh, to a date certain to uh, receive additional information. But that, that was the discussion of the board. Another thing is, we're we're against the application. Mm -hmm. My understanding, the other about her on the other side, Mr. Bryant, who's on the record, him and his daughter, the last meeting that they were also against it. Okay, I I, I know that there were several people who had uh, who had asked the board what was happening with that case when we had indicated that we were planning to continue to this evening, um, and so certainly that can be. Um, well, no, it, it wasn't about a continuance. It was specifically yeah. stated both both director butters mm -hmm. were not for the permit, the application. And that's on the record. That, you, you taped these, I believe. Uh, Absolutely. Mr. Bryant's daughter, who's one of the trustees of the house, was on the record at that meeting as well. Okay. All right. With that, um, I would like to move on to the next speaker, um, which is Holly McLaughlin. Hello, I'm Holly McLaughlin of 83 Granby Road, which is separate from 86 Granby Road. And uh, a couple of concerns that I have with the proposal. The first one is related to potential noise impacts due to the deck. My house is diagonally across the street and all three of my bedrooms would be facing the addition where there is additional seating, um, you know, fan lighting that would have potential for additional noise in the neighborhood and impacts to, you know, the internal in, inside of my house and any impacts to the bedroom space there. So that's my, you know, one of my main concerns. The other is related to the previous additions that I don't think was mentioned, but in addition to, you know, the large addition that, that was put on, I believe it was in 1996, that also did require a special permit. So the precedent that's being set by allowing multiple special permits on one site, I think really needs to be considered as well. Thank you. Um, there, anything further? That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, are there other members of the public who wish to address the board for this evening's hearing? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close public comment for this evening's hearing. Um, Mr. Valarelli, you may not know. Um, do you know any of the specifics of the of any of the prior special permits that were issued on this property? Uh, not of him, Mr. Chairman, but uh, we do have that on record. Okay. 
so then I will return this back to the board. Um, so what we have before us is an application for um, a front porch, uh, which would cover about two thirds the front of the house to a depth of uh, a little over around eight feet. Um, the applicant has submitted uh, three letters from um, people in the neighborhood who are in favor. Uh, we've heard directly from uh, an abutter and across the street neighbor who are uh, not in favor of the project. Um, there certainly there are uh, questions on this that the board cannot answer um, in regards to you know what the sort of the permitting history is necessarily on this project on this building or um, you know the the validity or the um, you know the exactness of the submitted uh, you know floor area and lot coverage and things like that those are all numbers that were submitted on documents that are signed and sealed by a registered design mm -hmm. professional. Um, so I, I, I think the board should take that into account. I think also the board should um, uh, consider whether there are, if there are questions that are, um, are things that they're, they're comfortable with the inspectional services delving into, um, then we can put that as a condition. But if there are concerns the board has that might that they would want additional information before proceeding, we can certainly request that and move forward in that fashion as well. Um, the next meeting of the board is July uh, 12th. Uh, Mr. Chairman. So not too, too far off. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I wonder if Mr. Valerelli can help us uh, assess, suppose it turned out that the, uh, that the lot coverage ratio was an er error. Um, and or that the size of the building, the gross square footage was in error. Uh, those are two different things. I wonder if he could tell us in what way that would apply to our consideration of uh, a special permit for the extension into the front yard that we have before us. I can, I can sort of see how, how uh, the question of lot coverage might or might not apply. Uh, a little less less uh, understanding of why it is that uh, the size of the house is, is particularly low. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hannon, I believe we had a, and, and forgive me, with, uh, in special services just deals with so many. I think we do look at all the possibilities that um, the applicant may need additional relief for while they are in front of the board for the projections. Um, uh, uh, we believe, again, uh, it'll be under review that um, the lot coverage is okay and the open space is okay. Uh, if we find during um, typical plan review that it is not, they would have to reappear before the board. The open decks that are out back uh, do count as open space. That does not impact that at all. It's like they don't exist uh, in that respect. So to answer your question, if uh, by chance uh, there are some inaccuracies, or uh, ISD initially missed something uh, for the application, they would have to come back to the board. Uh, all, all things being equal, if the information is correct that, that was presented, then the board has in front of them um, a decision to make with respect to the projection into minimum yard, nothing more. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, so if, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Valarelli, um, whether or not the, app, the board should act favorably on this application, uh, you will be reviewing lot coverage and review and uh, usable open space, which is related to the gross floor area. Um, and anything, I mean, obviously, if we don't approve it, it never gets to you. But if we do approve it, then you will be reviewing all of those things independently. Is that right? That's correct, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, those things that you mentioned and, and too many, many more to even mention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Other members of the board? Mr. Chair? Ms. Hoffman. Um, I have a question, um, perhaps for the architects uh, about the and this is in relation to the one of the last questions that was asked about um, light pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it looked like there were maybe just a few recessed can fixtures that 
perhaps wouldn't necessarily cause a significant light pollution issue outside the area of the porch. And I'm just wondering if that's something that can be commented on for the abutters. Uh, sure, I'm happy to speak to that. So um, the plans basically show two recessed cans and then one um, regular front door sort of fixture, similar to, I believe, something that's already in place. Um, from the perspective of, of uh, actually, there is not one in place, forgive me. Um, but so it would have a light fixture to the um, to the left of the door to allow for seeing where your key is going into the keyhole. Um, and then uh, a couple of recessed light fixtures um, that are basically tucked under that perimeter beam um, that encloses, you know, that that is that holds up the roof um, of that porch. Um, the expectation is that the light will largely stay within the porch area, frankly. Um, and um, and I know that there seemed to be some concern about um, a fan. It is just a ceiling fan. Um, there's just an outdoor, really um, not loud um, ceiling fan that we are intending, um, that we have put in the design just to move some air around um, on a hot night. Uh, nothing really much more than that. Does that answer the question? Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Would I be able to clarify my comment related to that? Um, in just a minute, please. Um, Ms. Ozick, I just wanted to, mm -hmm. to follow up with you. Are any of the, those lights proposed to be on a motion sensors or? No, are they they're, they're all switched. switched. Okay, mm -hmm. they're all switched. Um, so Ms. McLaughlin, usually, um, you know, with the, the public comment period is closed, it's closed, but you, you did want to clarify a point that you had previously made, so uh, I will allow it. Okay, thank you. So I, I believe that question was related to my comment on um, potential impacts to the bedrooms at my house, and it really is not related to the uh, light pollution or related to noise regarding the fan. It's the fact that there's a seating area which allows, you know, people to congregate, talk, laugh, have music playing. So it's more the noise related to that, which, you know, having it on the front of the house rather than a deck on the rear of the house, which allows for a distance, uh, you know, the building itself to maintain noise in the back. That's the concern, not the, the light from the light fixtures or the noise from the fan. Thank you for that clarification. Appreciate that. Um, Questions, comments from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccadelli. Uh, I'd also like to uh, ask a question uh, of the architect, because uh, I, I think one thing that um, was also mentioned by the abutters is that um, there's a concern about water, um, mm -hmm. but it, it looks like from the drawings, uh, there'll be gutters and mm -hmm. I assume downspouts and you guys will be managing that as part of this project. Could yeah, you please clarify. Absolutely. Uh, the intent is to manage that actually on the front lawn of this property. Um, there, you know, the downspout um, is indicated that it would be coming down basically on the front of the looking at the house left hand side of the um, porch. So it's very much central to the property. It's not really on either side of the driveway or even the abutter on the other side. It really is kind of central to the property. And I did also want to sort of clarify that I, that I do have photos of that show the house kind of at a skew and also facing forward. Um, it's in my letter that shows the space that there is between the front of the house and that tree that was mentioned. Um, so there is a little bit of space there. It's not like it's shutting that whole area down. And the idea would be for any water that would come off of that roof, that it would effectively be handled in that front yard area. It's all pervious. It's all just lawn. Uh, those are the Thank you. That's very helpful. Yeah. Anything further from the board? Yeah, so the question before the board, um, so the request for a special permit to construct a, uh, a porch on the front of a dwelling that would um, encroach within the front yard setback. Um, 
this is something that is allowed under our zoning bylaws under section 539A, um, but it does require uh, a determination by the Zoning Board of Appeals that it is not more detrimental and it requires um, the application of the special permit uh, requirements that the are in our town bylaws, but is more specifically under state law. Um, so should the board um, vote this evening on, a, on an approval for this application, are there specific conditions that the board would be seeking to impose? Um, there are three standard conditions that the board imposes on all applications. Uh, which I'll just read into the, this evening's um, record. So those three, the first is that plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. Should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, standard condition number two is the building inspector is hereby notified that he's to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time determines that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And standard condition number three is that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. Um, on similar projects in the past, the board has included um, conditions regarding uh, the, you know, the addition of a porch on the front of a house doesn't change the location of the foundation wall and that um, the enclosure of the porch shall uh, require the um, and it, an additional special permit. Both of those have now been added to the, the zoning bylaws by the last session of town meeting. So those two uh, conditions are no longer necessary. They are um, included in the zoning bylaw. Um, there were specific comments um, in relation to uh, sort of sight lines, um, uh, sort of the possibility of there being um, noise on the street. Um, and then there were numerous concerns about the, the overall size of the, of the house in relation to the size of the property and the way that the, um, that the house faces uh, the rear of the, of the property. So I don't know if there's, there are conditions that the member of the board feels would be appropriate in regards to those questions. Seeing none. Unless there are any further questions from the board, I would ask for a motion in regards to this application. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I move that the application be approved subject to the three standard conditions that the chair just read. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second. Uh, seconded by Mr. DuPont. So what the board has before it is a motion to approve a special permit for 82 Grandview Road uh, with the stated conditions. Um, the motion was made by Mr. Hanlon, seconded by Mr. DuPont. Are there any questions from the board in regards to what we are voting on? Seeing none, um, ask for a roll call vote of the members. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. The chair votes aye. That uh, motion is approved, and the special permit is approved for 82 Grandview Road with the stated three conditions. Thank you all very much. Brings us to the next item on our agenda, um, which is number 30 Venner Road. It's docket number 3697. This was uh, previously. Uh, heard by the board um, at our second May meeting, whose date is slipping my mind at the moment. Um, and at that time, the board had requested that the applicant uh, come back to the board with some modifications to uh, not encroach into the side yard uh, setback. And so those drawings were 
uh, submitted to the board along with um, a revised plot plan. And those are available through Novus. And with that, um, I would ask the homeowner to uh, address the board, tell us what they're doing. And in the meantime, I will be pulling up the revised package. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Uh, we had an extensive uh, uh, discussion of, about this application back in May. Uh, I'm sorry, my husband is traveling today and uh, I'm here on behalf of him. Uh, this is for this application is for an ADU for his mother, a uh, 70 year old mother, 72. Um, so we heard what the board had to say last time and we went back and worked with our architect, especially Mr. Hanlon. I thank you for your suggestion. Uh, we did uh, uh, work with him to change the six feet setback on the left hand side to 10 feet. And there was another gentleman who was on the call who also mentioned about uh, two egresses, the plot not having two egresses, the new addition. And I think we worked in that as well into our plan. Um, I mean, most of it is the same. We are, you know, we were we are moving the kitchen a little bit from what, where it was before to uh, to towards the front yard and. Uh, we are maintaining 10 feet from the left-hand side. And it does have an egress in the backyard as was suggested on the call uh, last month. I uh, would love to hear what the board thinks about this new plan and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Right. Thank you very much. Um, so, before, so this is the revised site plan. Yes, and I think the other one is the um, the design of the actual, mm -hmm. how we have changed it from six feet to 10 feet on the left-hand side. And, and just to remind people, this is the lot's a little bit different in that um, it is a through lot. So it does have two front yards. There's a front yard facing Venner Road, which is the main front, um, but it also backs up against Frontage Road, which is the Route 2 access road along the what would otherwise be the rear of the property. So the rear is technically another front. So this property has two front yards and two side yards. Um, and so the setback at the front, and the required setback for the front yard is 25 feet. The existing house is at 24 feet. So that's a nonconformity. Um, and along the, the other front yard, instead of being 25 feet, it's currently nine feet. And that's a pre-existing condition. Uh, and the two side lot lines are currently uh, correct. So there's no nonconformity in regards to the existing side yard setbacks. So this is the uh, proposed revision. Um, so this is this portion here is the addition. There's a, a rear egress, a front egress from the structure. There's a small kitchen, a bedroom, and a small bathroom. And otherwise it's connected uh, through this door to the main house. And so the this is where in typically in an R1 district, you would not be allowed to have two units on the property. This is being developed as an accessory dwelling unit. Um, it's 408 square feet, which is well within the, the limits uh, for an accessible dwelling unit. This is the first floor plan. This is just a, an enlarged plan at the back, um, which also includes a porch. Um, and so this porch will extend into the side yard setback, um, which under section 5.3.9B um, is allowed as long as it does not exceed five feet in depth. Um, and it is nowhere near that depth. So that's not an issue. <coughs> um, <coughs> is the existing left side elevation. This is the proposed left side elevation. So as we had seen before, the intent is to uh, construct a deck over uh, the single story um, addition for the accessory dwelling unit. The section through. And this is a second floor plan of both the 
proposed deck and the existing home. And then we have structural detailing for the deck. <clears throat> Excuse me, the existing front elevation and the proposed front elevation showing the addition with the deck on top. That's the set. So with that, are there questions from the board? Do not see any questions from the board. Mr. <clears throat> I just had to make a comment that I appreciate the petitioner uh, altering the designs to bring it into conformance with our uh, suggestions. Uh, Mr. Handler made some great suggestions and I think it's a handsome addition. I think it's a very efficient use of the property. And uh, that's all I have to add. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Anything else from the board? Um, seeing none with that, I will <clears throat> open this hearing for public comment. Um, as noted before, public comment uh, should relate to the matter at hand, be directed to the board for the purpose of making our decision. Um, if you would like to speak, please, you may digitally raise your hand uh, using the available button on the Zoom participants tab or down in star nine if you're calling in. At this point, I do not see anyone with a hand raised. We did receive some, we did, I can't recall if we received public comment at the first hearing or not. Um, but seeing no public comment for this hearing, I will close the public comment for this hearing. Um, so what the board has in front of it, it's a request uh, for a special permit. Um, so this is required uh, primarily because of the condition at the rear of the lot. Um, <clears throat> So the existing setback is nine feet at the at the between the building and the the second front lot line. Um, the addition is proposed to be only six feet back. Uh, this is something that the board can approve under Section Eight One Three B of our zoning bylaws with a determination that um, the chain that they proposed a the extension of the existing nonconformity is not. Uh, more detrimental than the existing condition. Um, as I mentioned before, the extension of the porch uh, of the new proposed deck that would extend into the right side setback that um, can be allowed uh, by right under section 539B, as long as it's under five feet. And it's currently, I believe the number is three foot one. So that's not an issue. The front yard setback the front yard, there's no change, and the left side setback of 10 feet, uh, required setback of 10 feet is being um, is being followed. Um, we have the three standard conditions that the board uh, typically imposes, which I would, uh, if, if the board was to vote um, to approve this, I would request that the board include that in the deliberations. Um, I would also ask, um, the applicant uh, to provide a revised uh, dimensional and parking information and open space gross floor area sheets, correcting uh, the changes uh, due to the, the different size um, and layout of the proposal. That's just a uh, part of the, it was part of the original application. It didn't come through with the revision, um, but that's information that the, the inspectional services will need uh, when they do their final review of the project. So I would ask that we include that as well. Are there any other uh, conditions that the board would like to recommend for this project? I am seeing none. Uh, with that, unless there are any further questions, I would ask for a motion. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the application be approved with the three standard conditions plus the additional condition relating to record keeping um, that the chairman has read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Duplant. So the motion before the board is a motion to approve the special permit for 30 Venner Road. <laughs> um, 
with the standard three conditions and one additional condition. Um, I, I did want to confirm just quickly with Mr. Valerelli that I believe that the uh, accessory dwelling unit is allowed by right, and the mm -hmm. board does not specifically need to vote on that. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Perfect. Thank you. I believe this is the first vote on an accessory dwelling unit, so I want to make sure I get that correct. Um, so with that, I uh, will take a vote of the board. Um, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Uh, that's <clears throat> approved motion. So um, the special permit for 30 Venner Road is approved with these stated four conditions. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. This brings us to the next item on our agenda. This is docket number 3700, 3840 Newport Street. Uh, this is an applicant who had appeared before the board at the prior hearing. Um, and had uh, the board had requested some adjustments um, somewhere in regards to uh, some setback issues and some roof slope issues. Um, and there was some other discussion in regards to uh, the proposal. The applicant has uh, submitted some revised materials which are available on the, um, on the town's website. I know they did get posted late. I apologize. Uh, I did not realize when I had sent them to Mr. Lee that he was on vacation. Um, but those have been posted to the, uh, to the, the board's website uh, or excuse me, to Nova's agenda specifically for this hearing. Um, so with that, um, and then I would just reiterate uh, for the, the applicant and, and for the board, um, at the previous hearing, uh, there were five members present who heard uh, the first part of this hearing. Um, one of those members, uh, Mr. Holly, is, was unavailable this evening. Um, and we did not know in time to uh, ask one of our other board members to um, become acquainted with the project. And so at this stage, um, there are only four members who can vote and under state law, it must be a unanimous vote of the four members present. So um, with that said, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I believe that's me who is excused from this particular matter. It is yourself and Ms. Hoffman. Okay. So, um, on the chance that we don't, that we do continue beyond this evening. Um, and it would become appropriate for one or the other of you to um, take advantage of the Mullen rule and become acquainted with the, with the project. I would, would ask if you wouldn't mind staying on the hearing, um, even though sure. um, otherwise not. So thank you, I, I appreciate that from both of you. Um, with that, I will turn to the applicant and um, I will go ahead and display the revised documents. Good evening, members of the board. Um, <clears throat> so we were heard uh, a couple of weeks ago and there was some recommendations made by the board. And I went back to the architect and had them redesign um, the roof structure of the addition. This is an addition on a hip style roof, um, which has some limitations, but um, so we, we dropped the slope to uh, two over 12, which we brought that exterior wall. Before it was, it was very boxy. And I, I even, you know, the board mentioned that it, it was boxy. Uh, now the, um, the roof has a nice slope to it. Um, we brought that exterior wall uh, on the Gray Street side down to seven six, which is the smallest we could do uh, with the five foot fire window and the two foot, um, uh, fall protection for a child so they don't fall out. And then uh, we took the um, the other side, the, the uh, um, blueprint still showed a four inch overhang on the other side of the home, which was a butting to the neighbor, which was, was incorrect and that was removed. And there was some other clerical is, is, uh, issues that were corrected. Um, so this is um, kind of what we came back with with the board's recommendations. I'm just putting it before the board to see uh, if there's any other comments and and such. Great, thank you. So this is the, the attic floor plan. Um, as the, the applicant noted, um, on the left-hand side here, 
the exterior wall of the proposed um, attic floor aligns with the outside wall of the building. Um, and on the other side, um, as was proposed earlier, it would overhang uh, beyond the floor below. Correct. Uh, this is the roof plan. Um, the, on the, so just one question on the roof plan. Um, here it's shown that the, the ridge line is in alignment with the, with the center of the roof. Correct. Um, but in the elevation, it's not. Mm. Um, because otherwise, the, so I'm just trying to figure out which is correct. It, it will be in line with the roof. I mean, what's our in line with the, the point? I believe that's. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then this is the view from Gray Street, uh, the right side view. This is the view, the rear view. So you can see the overhang a little more clearly here. It doesn't really, you can't really see, but the, there's a lower one foot overhang um, from the dining room on the first floor as well. So it kind of so can matches to that with the eye. Uh, you really can't see from the street because the bushes are very high. Mm -hmm. But um, when you're inside the yard, you can, it kind of, it plays nice with the eye. They also um, added clapboard instead of the shingles because uh, the, it looked, you know, really, you know, just one kind of blob and they were trying to break up the look of it. And I think that works pretty, I like the look of the clapboard better than the shingles and then the pitch roof, it all kind of plays together. I, I think it's uh, an improvement. I hope the board agrees. Thank you. Um, so again, here's the, with that rear side, this was the, the downhill side. Um, again, so this is now this surface, this wall surface is aligned with this surface up above. Correct. This is the <clears throat> small bump out over the stair. Does it extend beyond that bridge or is that just? I think thing? it's just the computer. I don't, it, it probably couldn't for, I think, water and stuff. Right. Um, and then this is the section uh, showing um, the beam. So essentially the proposed ridge beam would be above the height of the exist, would be basically, the bottom would be at the height of the existing gable, uh, excuse me, not gable, the existing ridge. Um, and then the walls would be coming down. Um, are there questions from the board? Excuse me, uh, Mr. No. Chairman, if you go back up two views, I think the rear view, the ridge lines lined up. Yeah. It, doesn't it seem so there? It does. Curious. <laughs> well, the, um, I just looked at the, um, uh, where the framing plan on the last page, and it's, it looks like it's centered with the, you know, the old one. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, can we take a look at the front view? I'd like to take a look at the slopes of the roofs and see if they're parallel or not. These, the small, you know, you get the left side sloped roof and then the one under it. Mm -hmm. Are they similar pictures or slightly different? So the, the notation indicates they are both 2 and 12. Okay. They would be parallel. Just easier on the eye if they're parallel. No, absolutely. It does look like a significant improvement in the design. Thank you. Other questions from the board? I wanted to ask a question here. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Didn't one party or another have a comment on the size of the windows? Can we take a look at them again? Didn't seem to be a problem to me. I'm just wondering 
why somebody would have an issue with it. So there's a, there was a, a question raised by um, the planning committee. I believe the planning, uh, just in regards to sort of the, that the windows are very different from the windows on the floor below. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I personally am concerned that the windows are oversized, um, that there are, but they're larger than are required by code. Um, and I would, you know, I would like to see if there was a way to bring this a little bit lower, but I believe that that was the question that was raised by the, by the planning department was this was related most, they had two questions. One has already been addressed, which was the amount of space between the top of the window and the underside of the eave. Um, and that has been reduced uh, by, by the roof pitch. And then the other question was sort of the way that those windows relate to the windows on the floor below. Um, and I think it's, it becomes more of an issue if the eave line is removed between, between the, you know, if the, if the eave breaks so that the wall is continuous, then it's, it's a little bit more obvious. But if the break of the eave line remains then it becomes a little bit easier to, uh, it sort of separates it a little bit better. I'm okay. So I had wanted to, um, so I do have some concerns still um, about how this building relates to the recommendations from the residential design guidelines. And so the design guidelines are, uh, were um, approved by the town and they sort of help to uh, direct how to consider doing um, residential development in Arlington and trying to sort of keep in line with the, you know, the way that the Things are currently developed, but also to allow flexibility for homeowners uh, to make modifications to their homes, uh, for developers to add uh, new infill properties. And so principle C1 um, <clears throat> specifically deals with dormers and other roof elements. And that there are some very specific things that it is looking to encourage um, and to discourage. So. Um, on the discouraging side, I think that this apple, this um, uh, that this application does that. There, um, you know, the windows are not undersized. Um, the dormer is not significantly larger. It's not more than half the width of the roof. Um, but in terms of the things that the that the bylaw that the excuse me the guidelines are trying to encourage. I'm a little bit concerned because the dorm, the you know, the recommendation is that the dormer should be a detail on the roof rather than the dominant feature. And I'm a little concerned that the basically having a dormer that's so tall and so high above the ridge line is is um, really creating uh, something that that doesn't necessarily fall within what the the guideline is recommending. Um, and the, the dormers are, there's also a recommendation that gable dormers should be set back from the edge of the roof. And it, uh, on one side, it's, um, it is set back from the edge of the roof, but on the other side, it actually is not. It's overhanging. And so I'm, I'm concerned about the appearance of that overhang. Um, and uh, again, sort of the continuation of the, of the eave line. Um, and then lining up with elements in the wall below. So I know that the applicant has, has said that the reason that they're overhanging the addition on the attic floor is to sort of align with the, uh, the bump out on the first floor, but that bump out doesn't it continue onto the second floor and it's not the same size and shape as the bump out on the lower floor. Um, and I, I had wanted to, to ask the applicant if they had looked at keeping the width of the addition um, the same width as the house and whether there was a specific reason that they needed that additional space in order for the, the work on the attic floor to be functional <clears throat> or if it was just a 
you know, a desire to have a little more space on that upper level. Well, it's, it's pretty much square footage. If you look at the um, <clears throat> the plans, the, the bedroom on the left where, because initially um, we thought we could go out further on that left side. And now that's to the um, building edge. If you look at the, um, like, I don't know what you call it, like a bird's eye view of the plans. Uh, uh, it's A1.3. Yeah. That bedroom is tiny, you know, and it's, I mean, it, it's basically, I don't think any adult is going to want to live in there, but it's, you know, your kid's bedroom. And that's what the whole purpose is. But um, so we're trying to get some square footage. It's from what the architect was telling me is it's with these hip roofs, it's really hard to get any square footage in there because mm -hmm. all the angles and the only way to do it is to take the whole roof off and do one whole side of the house. But then that gets extremely expensive. So that's, that's why we did the overhang. And at first I, I was hemming and hard about it, but with that one foot overhang from the um, dining room downstairs, when I sat there and looked, I actually went back over to the house um, after we had that meeting and, and looked at that and you know, visualized that overhang and everything. And um, it, it, not that it's, it, it's not symmetrical, it doesn't line up, but it, it does have that same feature. So it does play with the eye. And I mean, that's, I mean, it just, the overhang is, is definitely to get some square footage out of it. I mean, we're trying to get a bathroom in there as well as, a, a, you know, a, a bedroom that's livable. I mean, as you can see, the one on the left is, it's really tight. Mm -hmm. the, the hip roof also contributes to how it doesn't totally conform to the recommended guidelines. Because if you look at the pictures of the recommended guidelines, they are more conventional straight roofs, not a hip roof is this. So they really don't have the option to conform to those guidelines without removing the entire roof, which is prohibitive. Um, I also wanted to just, so we had this, there was a brief discussion last time uh, about sort of two different things. One was about trying to lower the roof. Um, so that's what sort of these red lines here represent was, you know, is there a way to bring the roof line down to align with the existing, uh, with the existing height of the gable? Um, and as the applicant has said, um, they're having trouble fitting the windows 24 inches below the window and uh, fitting the, <clears throat> excuse me, and then getting the, the, two, the two and 12 slope. Um, so another idea that I, that I believe we had mentioned last time is sort of this idea here in blue, which, excuse me, so, ah, stay, um, is the possibility here of doing, with the side addition rather than being a shed coming off the main is doing it as a gable roof coming, you know, facing the side. Um, and I wasn't sure if that it was something that the applicant had, had considered as a way to try and, um, you know, gain the, the height they're looking for, but still uh, try to maintain the existing line of the ridge. Yeah, I just, I'm, so right I up. guess you're saying that blue thing would be straight across the other side of the house. Right. Correct? So you'd have two Rather than have a shed, that goes down to the left and a shed that goes down to the right, you'd have a ridge that's perpendicular to the ridge you have now with, um, with the, the, so the gable facing the sides rather than the front and back. Yeah, so, I mean, it just as a look, of, I mean, to the eye, it's kind of going against, you know, the, the roof is kind of left to right if you're facing the house. And now you kind of got to have these, I don't know how that's going to look, you know? So you'd have that same side gable on both left and right? You'd have, I think, yeah, you have to, yeah. you'd have to cut the, but then you couldn't, the, the hips come up over that, right? So, how would you, so you would have so the hip roof, so you'd have the hip coming up, you'd have the main ridge line still, and then this would tie in with that ridge line. I, I, the, 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 the thing that I'm having trouble with is 
this sitting up way high over the top of the of the existing ridge. It's just a, it, to me, it's a very. I mean that that has to do with the two to twelve. Uh, we dropped that exterior wall down as far as we could, but we had to raise up that center beam like an inch and a half, I think, to mm -hmm. get that two to twelve. I don't know if, if that's something something you guys can a vote on not to have the two and twelve, or is that something that's set in stone? Or so the two and twelve would require a variance. Um, oh boy, yeah. Yes, we can't do that. Unfortunately, we can't do that. Um, but let me to go back to the board. Are there see if there if, if the what the board sort of feels in regards to the the ridge height. Mr. Chairman? Mills. Um, I, I do see your concern about the ridge height being higher than the existing, but it is set back significantly far. And from a streetscape view, I don't think you're really going to see it. I don't think it's going to be that imposing, if you will. I mean, if it was coming all the way out to the front peak, it would look kind of silly, I guess. But I think, you know, it's set back how many feet from the front? Um, it's probably safe to say if, if this is 16, if it, the addition on the right hand side is 16 feet front to back, so it's probably that same dimension going to the front of the house. So, I, I think from the streetscape, it's really not going to be that noticeable. I don't know if the side view mm -hmm. how it's going to look, but unless you're sitting on the porch across the street, I don't think you're going to notice that additional height, if you will. Okay. Just my two cents. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gadelli. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think I agree with your concern, but I'm also very sympathetic to the applicant that they are, you know, trying to make the most out of the space. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think um, your initial point about the uh, um, bump out of the dormer um, is slightly more concerning to me than the, the height of the top, just because it, I think it may feel um, slightly imposing from the, the street, even though I know that uh, there's some screening with bushes and other things at the street edge. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Um, is it within our authority to, I mean, if, assuming that in order to mitigate the impact of, of some of the of the mass here, that screening is of value. Could we could it be a condition of the application that some suitable screening is maintained? Um, In the, uh, the the screening of the uh, the bushes in front of the house. Yeah, right now, well, they're, they're sort of more than bushes, but the, they essentially make the house from at least the sidewalk practically invisible unless you walk around towards the back. Uh, and I was just thinking that if the problem is what happens when those trees go, because they may eventually, there's nothing that's going to require them to stay there, um, then we, sh we shouldn't be relying on the impact that, on the effect that they have on the overall approach. But if a condition could be that screen, suitable screening is maintained uh, and that were properly you know, done in order to specify what it is, I, I think that the screening that's currently there is not a popular tree at this point, but uh, that might enable us to, to sort of assume, well, there will be the screening and that will be what, what addresses Mr. McAdell's concern. I, I personally love the bushes, the uh, primitive bushes. I mean, I don't, they've got to be 14 feet tall and they're not going anywhere. Um, I just had my guy clean the yard and everything and trim them, but they're not going anywhere. No, they've been there at least 25. They have to be. I love them. It provides a lot of <laughs> peace in the yard. You can sit in the backyard and it's not, you know, you don't, the cars don't even bother you. Gray Street's a pretty busy street, but you don't, I mean, with the bushes, it's it's pretty peaceful. Good. Anything further from the board? We do have, otherwise I was gonna open for public comment. 
Okay, so again, the board takes public comment as it relates to the matter at hand, and this is intended to assist the board with reaching um, a decision. And so with that, um, we only have one person in the public with us this evening. So Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Steve Moore, People on Street. Um, I've been having a lot of trouble with my camera tonight, so the colors and stuff have been all quite weird. I apologize for that. Um, the only comment I have to make is I, I appreciated uh, uh, your, uh, you, Mr. Chairman, the um, suggestions you were making on the roof line and the dormer. Uh, I had been one of the ones that had concerns about the window sizes as well. And I will just uh, repeat the comment I made last time, which was the bushes are, are wonderful. And it's, it's great to hear that uh, uh, Mr. Wakalis is, is wanting to maintain them forever. But they are impermanent. And um, they are, Mr. Wakalis may not be the owner beyond 10 years. And, and uh, the large building will still be there if some other owner decides to take them down. Um, I, I, my, my big concern is that this is a corner uh, lot, and this is a very bulky building now with that sort of uh, a roof line and, and addition. And I, I don't know quite how to cure that exactly, but it's, I, I just personally have found it not fitting. Um, it would be helpful if a projection of what the uh, amended building would look like within the context of the neighborhood would help whether or not this really works or doesn't. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Any other public comment? Um, Ms. Ozick? Okay. I'm, I'm just lurking. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I did want to make- um, uh, Sorry, one... I have to ask a name and address for the Sorry, record. Dana Ozick, 28 8 Park Street, not a neighbor at all. But I have a comment about the windows. Um, I think that you could look into the idea of casement windows. They give you egress in a smaller size. So it might be enough to address some of these questions about roof height, um, having still that two foot under uh, sill um, and all that. I just want it as an option. I, it's an idea. If that's what's pushing the roof up, it just might be something to think about. And I'm gonna excuse myself now. <laughs> Thank you. Really that. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment for this evening. Um, so the matter the board has before it, this is an application uh, for a special permit. Um, the reason that this is coming before the board has to do with um, not with any of anything that we've been necessarily discussing but it has to do with the fact that the I believe the property has zero usable open space and because this is an increase in the gross floor area there is a required increase in the amount of um, usable open space that is required that uh, cannot be provided on the property so this is an existing non-conformity um, which is going to be intensified by the addition of the space on the attic floor. Uh, and therefore it needs a determination by the Zoning Board of Appeals that it is not more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and, uh, and the board also would apply the criteria for a special permit in making that determination. Um, I had not brought it up before, but I did want to um, share the report from from um, the planning board, uh, excuse me, not the planning board, the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, so they had looked at the property. Um, so they had, in their review of that criteria, uh, obviously the requested use is appropriate. Um, the additional space is a, at, least, um, at least a public convenience and welfare. It will not change the traffic congestion or public safety. It will not be a burden on municipal system. In terms of special regulations, the special regulation um, specifically that would come up here is the, is the 819, excuse me, 813B, which is the um, extension of existing of a pre-existing nonconformity. 
Um, and criteria six is really uh, the, this question of the character of the district. Um, I don't think there's any question in regards to the health, morals, or welfare. Um, but the question is really sort of how the proposed addition uh, fits in with the integrity and character um, of the district. Um, so the what the what was said by the planning department, the homes in the immediate vicinity of the property are two family structures, large dormers and a variety of styles are a common feature of the neighborhood, especially along Newport and Highland. The addition includes two large dormers and a small dormer for the stairwell, along with other interior renovations to increase the living area in the lower unit. Uh, proposed change in building height and roof lines will increase the structure's massing and scale. The applicant is encouraged to explore other designs that would make the dormer a less dominant feature of the roof and better match the existing roof type and pitch as well as the style of the existing house. The applicant may also consider the potential for minor adjustments to the location and size of the dormer windows to better align and order them with the window pattern on the lower levels. Uh, and then the criteria seven at the detrimental use um, doesn't apply. Uh, so there was uh, it's about the, the hedge. So this is looking from down, lower down on Newport Street. This is the sort of the end of the hedge. Um, but this gives you a good sense as to the, the size of the hedge in relation to the house. So the, um, anything that happens at the roof level will be uh, very much visible above the top of the, the, head, the existing hedgerow that's there. Um, and this is looking from uh, pretty much the corner of, of uh, Gray and Highland. Um, so you just can't see the bump out um, that exists here on the first floor, but it's down here. Um, and then the, they recommend that the applicant adjust the slope, which the applicant has done. So I just wanted to briefly review that. Um, So, I, so I think what the, the what the board has in front of it is really this decision as to whether um, this addition is um, sort of in keeping with the sort of stylistically um, the the neighborhood and um, adjacent buildings as it would relate to criteria six uh, for a special permit and the. The town has provided the, the residential design guidelines to assist the board in sort of making that determination. Um, as I said before, I do have reservations about, about this application um, and specifically about the way that this, um, the way that this addition sits on the roof. Um, it, there's, the, there's sort of the two sides to it. Um, one is the width of it. Um, I, I, I find it very disturbing that it overhangs the floor below, um, which is really not in keeping with the, what a dormer is supposed to be. It, I understand that there is a bump out farther down the building, um, but it's not nearly as wide. And um, that making this change is really sort of a, a, a strange juxtaposition going from floor to floor. So I would feel much more comfortable if the sidewall of the third floor was continuous um, with the floor with the in the same plane as the sidewall below, uh, which I think could be accomplished by moving the the closet so that the two bedrooms on either side are more similar to each other. Um, I think that 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 could be done in a way that would um, would sort of alleviate that, and that would allow the eave line to remain um, along, which would help to separate the floor above from the floor below, and really sort of help make it contain it and make it feel much more like a, like a dormer rather than, um, you know, a, an additional piece that's coming off the roof. Um, I'm sure. So, so you're saying um, if the overhang wasn't there, you, you would be happy with that? I, 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 I would, I, mean, I would be much more comfortable if that was not overhanging on the right hand side. Yeah. Um, I, I would also be much more comfortable if the if the height was different, um, but I, there are certainly other opinions on the board, um, and this is sort of part of the what I wanted to sort of uh, 
was alluded to sort of at the start is that at this point you need a vote of four members of the board if if we were to try to vote tonight um and with the way the drawings are currently i don't think i could support it so i'm not sure if there's a way that the board could draft a decision a, a recommended well, be, or if we should go ahead and continue mr chair i'd, I'd be willing to to put that exterior wall flush with the building if okay. that would you know uh, you know, help for the board to uh, feel that this is appropriate. Um, thank you. I, I do very much appreciate that. Um, with that, how do members of the board feel in regards to the the height of the addition? Um, I know that the height of the the height of the addition is being driven by the the fact that there are. You know, the, the windows, because they're double hung, they open, the required open space is 12, 20 inches wide by 24 inches tall at 5.7 square feet in order to get a fireman in and out. And obviously with a double hung window, you need twice that in the height of the window in order to accommodate it. Um, a different window type would allow you to sort of to make that smaller, but then the, you know, it becomes an issue that now, you know, what is the height of the building on the on that it side. also goes against the spirit of the ordinance, which states that they want the same style windows. And that's exactly why we want them, you know? Right, right. But if um, you're also, if I might, if you're cutting down the width of the area, yep. floor taking that foot and a half off, and you're bringing the roof line down by a foot and a half, you're impacting the usable space within the enclosure. Uh, so it's almost one of these things, you, you can't have it both ways. Um, so, he said, so one just one request affects the other. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, certainly in most houses, you know, in most applications, we see that the height at the exterior wall is not seven foot six; it's more like six foot eight, mm -hmm. six foot seven. Um, so it's really sort of bringing that scale down. So this is, you know, is significantly taller. At the exterior wall than a lot of other applications we see, um, which I think is part of what I'm you know, having having difficulty reconciling. Um, yeah, that that's that two to twelve slope. I mean, I don't know. I'm not even sure why they have it in there because I've seen a lot of um, dormers just driving around lately thinking about this that are flat roof. I don't know if that's something new they put in, but it mm -hmm. prohibits certain design things like that because then we could go you know, lower on that. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the slope is but, all about. But you're also, you're not upsetting the existing hips. Yeah. As much as possible. Uh, and, and to make it work square footage wise and without existing as much of the exist, damaging as much of the existing roof, you, there are mm -hmm. certain constraints built in. Right. That you have to kind of work around. Um, and if it's all about like you said, the usable yard space, strict because it's not 25 square feet or straight shot of the yard. Uh, we are trying to fit this into a box that, that it doesn't give us a lot of room. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Jim. Mr. Hanlon. Oh. <clears throat> I just wanted to go on record that I sort of agreed with what Mr. Mills and uh, Mr. Gavelli said earlier. Obviously, there's some concern here, and the question is really how big a concern it is and whether it could be mitigated in some way. Um, I think that the applicant's agreement with respect to the overhang is a big step forward. Uh, and the question ultimately is to what extent we are prepared to push this um, in light of the difficulties that we're coming up on in, in, in accommodating the next step. Um, I, I think it's, it might be time, at least it would be time if it was all by myself, to sort of stop and take a look at this and figure out what could be done to implement the 
the proposal that's already been made and to see what else could be done to accommodate the chair's concern and the concern that have been expressed by others as well. And then, and then take a look at something to approve. And if we did that, if we had a contingency, if the applicant were agreeable to that, we could do it next time where you wouldn't necessarily need a unanimous vote. Um, I have to say that there's one, the concern that Mr. Leone mentioned is one that I have that hasn't been mentioned before. Uh, until very recently, we basically have treated uh, basically going from zero to a greater degree of zero in terms of open space as if it didn't propose any issue at all. And recently, and I was a big part of the reason why we did this, we haven't really looked at it formally in quite the same way. Uh, but I thought that the results that we have been traditionally getting by essentially taking a fairly loose approach to cases where this is the only thing that is that our jurisdiction hangs on was the right policy uh, to have. And when you really get right down to it, when the applicant has done the best he can and we have non-enforceable uh, residential design guidelines and it, the kind of increase in non-conformity that we have here, uh, eventually, it seems to me that that whatever happens will be suboptimal from somebody's point of view. And if we took a little bit more time and we said this is our best shot, um, we can then go up and down on whether it's approvable and and take it from there. But I don't feel very comfortable doing it tonight on the basis of the discussion that we've already had. I don't see it clearly enough in my mind to be sure that, that this is the best that can be done. Thank you, Mr. So the, the, Mr. Hamlin is making a suggestion that we might do well by asking the applicant for continuance. Do other members of the board agree? But I, I just don't understand, like, um, so I tried to do, you know, I came back with a new plan and I agreed tonight to, you know, push that side in um, to please the board, but I don't know what else I could do to make it any better. Yeah. That's my, my thing, you know. I mean, I'm willing to put a condition on the special permit that that, that uh, exterior wall on Gray Street is flush with the building. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got the pitched roof now, and I think it I think it looks a lot better than it used to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would the board be comfortable with a voting on a an application whereby we have conditions in regards to the location of the sidewall? Um, that is not reflected in the drawings or just the board, would the board prefer to have revise the drawings and then vote on the final drawings? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I, I, we've basically been attempting to make sure that the when we have our final drawings condition that right. it right. actually refers to the final drawings that are before us and just as a matter of form from the point of view of writing these opinions, I think that we should not allow to ourselves to get into the habit of trying to say the final conditions except for the provisions of condition four, which then without a drawing modify the final conditions. I think that ultimately that is going to cause confusion at some point and that we ought to avoid doing that. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. Yes, I agree with Patrick. I'm very sympathetic to the applicant and wanting to move on and everything. It's a relatively simple thing. But I think making a condition that the drawing is going to conform to some future specification would uh, lead us to have a can of worms open constantly. People will always be pointing back to that exception. And uniformity in our decisions is important. If Mr. Hamlin has done a great job. Uh, policing that, and I think we should keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Leone? May I ask when the next meeting is of the commission is? It is uh, July 12th. 
Can we ask my, Mr. Wilkes if he can have his plans ready by then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to the architect again and um, I'll just have them uh, push that side in on the Gray Street side, just like we did on the other side. So I think if you could pull the pull that side in, keep the keep the the eave line of the roof continuous in front of the, you know, so that the existing eave line of the roof main, is maintained. Um, uh, what's the? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what. So it basically, means. basically, so that the when you look at the side of the house, yeah, the, the line of the gutter and the edge of the roof should continue across the front should continue along the full length of the house rather than stopping on both sides of the dormer. I guess I, I don't, uh, what page would that be on the plans? Uh, let me see if I can. Not really well drawn on either one. If you look at 2.A2.3. Yep. Um, you could, to where the dorm, so you have the dormer with the clapboards. And then it looks like the, there's a section, a small section of roof at the very bottom of the dormer, and the gutter line goes across. And then you have the the wall below that that's shingled with the windows. Right. So I think if so you you're could, saying you want to see a gutter there, I want to if you keep that because there's an there's a pretty wide overhang on the roof. So if you maintain that line of roof across there on both sides keep the dormer the width of the house and whatever you can do with the, the height of the roof, you know, obviously you can only do what you can do um, for the height. I think if we can make those adjustments, then I think we're. So I think I see what you're, what you're saying is there's like a line of shingles. It looks like there's a line of shingles underneath the clapboard and then yep. below that's the gutter. So you, you want to have like a line of shingles and a gutter right, right there on, yeah. both, so if on to, both sides. Yeah. So if you look at like A2, which is the west elevation, the, the front elevation facing onto Newport, that existing front dormer that you have, you can see it sort of looks like it comes up out of the roof rather than being a part of the wall below. It's sort of that appearance that we're. Okay. And that that's that's in the in the uh, in the guidelines. So. We'd be okay. doing that and we would be staying back, you know, we would be staying within the, the width of the house with um and so then, basically I'll just tell the architect stay stay in the width of the house. Yep. Okay. Um if I might um Brandon, yeah. on A2 on the right, you see how the gutter line extends beyond the wall a little bit. Yep. On the right side, he wants to see that on the left side as well. Yeah, so you just want the so basically what we don't want is like a, a section of wall that's three stories tall. You know, you can have you have a two story wall and then you see the right, roof line go by. With the, without know. the overhang, I don't think it would be that way, right? Right. You wouldn't need to put it that way. Some people sometimes cut it and it just looks wrong. So we just want to make sure it oh, how, how do you mean cut it though? So some sometimes you'll see in a, a dormer where rather than keep that section of roof going across, they'll cut it out. And, and so the wall itself just continues up. Oh, I see what you're saying. So it would, it would, the gutter would stop and then start again. Exactly. It, so it, it, it looks much nicer if it's continuous because then it's really, it's a dormer. It's not just an extension of the house. Okay. You keep the skirt. Exactly. Um, are there any other comments from the board? Uh, just one more comment as far as we're doing the drawings. All the peaks should line up front and back. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll talk Minor drawer. Yeah. <laughs> Correction. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I, I just wanted to say that uh, I agree with you. I think if, if it was within the, um, the line of the house below, I would feel comfortable voting for that. And I was just, uh, you know, looking at Google Earth and I'm noticing that uh, a street. Um, I'm sorry, three houses down, I think it's number 22, Newport Street has a very similar condition to that. So I think there's precedent in the neighborhood for, for that same condition. Okay. I'll take a look for that. Um, so with that, I think 
um, would the applicant be willing to uh, entertain a continuance to Tuesday, July 12th at 7.30? Yes, I would. And I'll have, I'll have that um, exterior wall pushed in with the new plans for you folks. Perfect. With that, then, um, may I have a motion from the board to continue the special permit hearing for 3840 Newport Street to July, to Tuesday, July 12th at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Hanlon. So moved. Thank you, sir. And may I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. So there's a vote of the board to continue the special permit hearing for 3840 Newport Street to Tuesday, July 12th at 7.30 p.m. Um, so a vote of members present. Uh, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. DuPont? I'm not sure I'm involved in this, am I? Because I'm not part of the hearing. I think you can vote to continue. Uh, then I. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Um, Ms. Hoffman? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we are continued. Um, I would ask Mr. DuPont and Ms. Hoffman if one of one of the other of you would be willing to review the prior hearing um, and sign us and basically do the follow the Mullen rule to uh, allow you to vote at the subsequent at the July 12th hearing. Are both of you available that night? I am. Roger, do you wanna go ahead and do that? Yeah, I'm happy to do it unless uh, Ms. Hoffman wishes to do it herself. I don't want to assume anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's appropriate that you do it. Okay, <laughs> we'll do. Great. Thank you all very much. So we um, so we are continued on Newport Street. And I really appreciate the, the applicant's willingness to, to work with the board on, on some of these details. And uh, thank well, you very much. Look forward I to- I appreciate the members of the board's time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you board. Sorry that I dropped in a few seconds late. No, you were you were in and out. I, I'm not quite sure what happened there, John. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a good Fourth of July. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you now. Okay, so the, uh, the next meeting of the board will be Tuesday, July 12th at 7:30. Uh, we, we will hopefully uh, complete Newport Street, and we have a new case, which is 79 Ronald Road, uh, and I believe Mr. Valerelli has uh, submitted. Um, that it has, has uh, circulated that to the board. Uh, we should have that in front of us. Yep. Um, and with that, I believe that is everything we have on our agenda for the, tonight. So I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I'd like to thank Mr. Valerelli, Mr. Lee, Ms. Lanema, and Ms. Lauf for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So moved. Sir, may I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moore. Before you, uh, before you vote on that motion, um, I'd like to uh, query as to whether or not Mr. Hanlon had any intent when he was flipping the knife the way he was to communicate something particular. What was that? Was that a knife you were flipping, Mr. Hanlon? It was not. It was not a knife I was flipping. It looked with the background like. A knife, and I thought I just wanted to make sure. You I think it was the thing that one uses to clean the the the, the keyboard. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, sir. I just want to clear that up. Thank you know, I do, I do get excited at some of these meetings, but so far not that. Excited. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, vote of the board to adjourn, Mr. Dupont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mills. Aye. Mr. Aye. Hoffman. Aye. 
And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all so much. Happy 4th. Happy 4th. Happy 4th.